Thank you, thank you, thank you for that welcome. And thank you, Amanda, for pushing that buzzer. Ever since you did it, my life has been bonkers. People approaching me on the road saying, well done. But the most common question I get is, you're from where? Is it Mali, Maui, Ma it's Malawi. And if any of you don't know where that is, it's where Madonna adopted all the babies from. <laughs> That's us. Yeah, you're jealous. I do miss my little brother. <laughs> oh. Oh. And Angelina took my sister, so. <laughs> and I've been in the UK a while. I was tricked into moving here. I was tricked because I was watching television and I saw an angry guy came on television and he said, oh, these immigrants take all the good jobs, all the good women. I was like, wow, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> Sometimes comedy, it's hard to laugh sometimes because the news is full of depressing stuff. But I think the thing is, it's misleading because amazing things happen every day, little acts of kindness, but they don't report it. They put it on page 10, they open with the doom and gloom. If the BBC News was a mate of yours, you'd never go over. Look, I'm not going to that depressing barbecue. <laughs> I'm gonna hang out with Cartoon Network. <laughs> But it's an amazing time to be alive. People say stuff like, oh, oh the, I miss the good old days. The good old days were terrible. We've got amazing stuff. We've got Wi-Fi. Mm. Yeah. We've got rights. <laughs> Women can vote. Yeah. I'm black. 200 years ago, this would have been an auction. <laughs> We've come along. Doom and gloom, the, Mal the Malawian press is a lot worse than your press here. I I'll tell you, like I did the first ever comedy show in Malawi, which isn't an accomplishment. I'm the only stand-up comedian, right? <laughs> and I called the local press and said, send a reporter. The editor said, ah, why don't you uh, write the review yourself? Huh? <laughs> you give me some money, I will say we wrote it. I was disgusted by the total lack of integrity in the Malawian press. But wow, that was the best review I ever got. <laughs> Seven stars! He's a genius! The African Michael McIntyre! <laughs> oh, but it's crazy I'm on television right now because my ex always felt I wasn't ambitious enough. She always used to be like, you're a comedian, come on, be more ambitious. I said, hey, I'm happy. She said, you're not happy. I said, I think I'm happy. She said, no, be more ambitious. I did not sign up for somebody who's going nowhere. I snapped. I told her, look, you knew I wasn't ambitious the day we met. Of all the women in the bar, I approached you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're laughing, I'm single now. <laughs> and I am looking for love, I'll admit, I'm looking for love, you know, gotta get that citizenship, you know. <laughs> I remember going for a date and the woman made a lot more money than me, which isn't a problem, we're in the 21st century, but I was ashamed. I remember the waiter came up, assumed I was gonna pay. Put the bill in front of me, I had to go, huh? <laughs> I'll get the next one. <laughs> I felt so pathetic watching her pay. I wanted so badly to be part of the transaction. So I just took the change. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the British. I saw a beautiful British woman looking at a mirror upset. I said, what's going on? She said, can't you see? It's a fat mirror. I said, what do you mean the mirror's fat? She said, this mirror makes me look fatter than I really am. I said, wow, I think my eyes have the same problem. <laughs> I was not mocking her. Don't be angry with me. It was a cultural misunderstanding. I'm from Africa. It's different. When we see someone overweight, we don't think go on a diet. We're more like, where did you get the food? <laughs> I think we gotta follow her home. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.